after the applause, and as the movie is being set up, uh, Razor exits off to the side of the stage, and her hand is probably still in your hands, Mila, and you can feel her grab your wrist and kind of pull you off to the side, uh, encouraging Al and whomever else to talk with her. And she is still frowning and she says so you sprung it yourself I guess I can't blackmail you for something that you freely admitted don't you think this is a better outcome for me all of us no no not for all of us she says I still have fucking damage on my head, and you tried to fucking kill me. I'm supposed to forget about that because of some goddamn song that you sung? We still have a problem. And, of course, I'm not going to start fighting you off the get-go. But we're not friends. I I didn't... mm Mm-hmm. No, 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 go ahead. I'm saying as a DM. Uh, no, she can continue. Mila will be just staring at her, nodding. Al? No, 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 no. You, you throw in first. You have the right of way. Al would say, we may not be friends, and this may not have turned out exactly how you wanted it to turn out, but this isn't all bad for you. You said everyone here treated you like crap. You have an opportunity to change that. They're going to ask you questions now. If you want my advice, tell them that you care about Greencastle and the people in it. That's why you've stayed. That's why you've continued to do community service. That's why you haven't caused a problem, because you care. And if you do that, I think you'll find their attitudes towards you change quite a bit. She says, yeah, all right. It's good advice, except we have one final problem. As I said, you tried to kill me, and you damaged me up pretty bad. I don't forget people who tried to kill me. Watch your backs. And with that, she excuses herself by turning around and working her way back through the crowd. Al's going to sigh and uh, shake his head. Okay. Patrick's going to wobble and lean on you, Al, and kind of, like, get his head real close to yours. (laughs) (laughs) If you're going to kiss him, just do it, dude. (laughs) He's kind of just, like, leaning his side onto his side and, like, having his head on his shoulder, and he's going to turn his head to his, his mouth to his ear. He goes... Didn't she try to kill us? <laughs> Al's going to tap uh, Pat Patrick on the shoulder and say, people always seem to get fuzzy on those details. Uh, speaking of... No, I should stay for the movie. I want to watch it. Are you okay, Patrick? Yeah. You don't sound okay. Hmm? Right. I just... Mm -hmm. Just stay there for a bit. And he's gonna, like, (laughs) lean a bit harder on you. (laughs) I think Al's gonna go find Patrick a nice seat where he can watch the movie. (laughs) And then probably stay with Patrick in case he collapses or something. Okay. So, um... Gyro doesn't stay for the movie, but he finds some time to speak with you. Um, uh, I'll just set up a scene where he can just talk with all three of you, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. He, he pulls you aside or he takes you aside. He, he talks with you and he goes, <clears throat> well, 
I have to say, you're not the keenest when it comes to tactics or candor, but you do put on quite a show. Um, we learned it um, how many months ago? Four? We were part of a traveling show. I see. Well, like I said, you sure got a flair for it, and people aren't going to forget this. Plus, I noticed your little uh, nod to me at the beginning of your little song. I have to say I appreciate that. It'll help me politically quite a bit. There's a lot that needs to be done here in Greencastle still, and it's good to see that you and I, both yourselves and myself, can still work together. I only have one small problem, and it isn't really all that small. My man, Tio, he died by your hand. Yes, he did. Now, now, what you said in your little song there, you realize that was a mistake. You feel bad about it. Is that true? Beyond anything... Patrick will actually like raise up his eyes in the most serious he can get at this state. <laughs> Al will uh, agree with him and nod his head and say, we both know this is a harsh world we live in. And sure. the ones that live the longest are the ones that can make split second decisions. But it doesn't mean we don't ever look back on those decisions and regret them. He nods a little bit. All right. Now, if this was this information were to come to me from another way, I might have had to throw the book at you, so to speak. Killing an unarmed man in my books is murder, especially my own. And there's going to be members of my crew who don't really like what you did. However, maybe we can come to some sort of restitution Tio was still on board to work with me for another 14 months he's got kin back home if you were to pay me what was owed to him and we give it to his family it would be a gesture of your remorse it would exact some sort of justice on my end and it would cool the heels and the tempers of some of my men. How much would does he owe? Is he owed? I'd have to look up the specifics, but typically for a man of his talents and his veterancy, I believe it would be in the ballpark of about 55,000 credits. Right, before I answer, as a player, are we fine with this? Was Tio the nice one? Yes. Yeah, Tio he's the one you were nice flirting one. with, yeah. I was flirting with? Well, no, you, well, not flirting with. You charmed him. You charmed him. Oh, I think, who was I at that point? Was I Mila or Nora? You Nora. were uh, before the fight or after or during, because I think those were two different. Before people. the fight, you were pretending to be somebody, and I'm pretty sure you were your actor self, so I'm pretty sure you were Mila. Yeah, right. when the I think so. When the, f when the fight happened, you switched to Nora, for sure. And, and I remember during the ride home, you were Nora, too, because I did the whole lioness thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. Then I think uh, Nora would say something, so long as we're all okay with the retribution. Restitution. Restitution. Ret Ret Retribution is a Retribution. <laughs> <laughs> Retribution. <laughs> Revengeance. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing good tonight, guys. Listen, I've been up since 7 o'clock this morning. I worked an 8 hour, or actually, no, like a 9 or 10 hour shift. I would almost suggest to pay more, if not double. I'm kind of okay with that, yeah. Mila? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, I think 
based on my inability to like communicate tonight, I'm just gonna say that Nora would make a point to say that just words of thanks that he was that Tio was a good man and deserved better type of thing. Yeah. And um uh Gyro would nod solemnly and goes, you're absolutely right. But we can't change the past. We can only learn it and make a better future. Al would nod and say, we'll have 100,000 credits uh, delivered to you however you prefer, as long as you can make sure that the full value goes to his next of kin. On my word, I'll make sure. I won't touch a single penny. That's for his and his own. And you can give it to me personally. All right. Uh, I marked down the uh, group loot, so I'm not sure. I, I guess we do a credit chip or something like that. Credit chip? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we take care of that. Sweet. Excellent. Great job, guys. Wow. You handled that blackmail superbly. Superbly. Now, let me just narrate a little bit of the after effects um, of everything, kind of just set the, the general mood of Green Castle and the populace, and then you guys can decide what you want to do next, okay? Mm -hmm. So how individuals take your, uh, your information? It takes a few days. Um, you, you would hear through word of mouth or through other individuals. Um, a, lot of, a few people, I'd say about 20%, are a little disillusioned. They, they really had you um, marked up as heroes, and kind of hearing that you were you're just human and you've made mistakes, it, 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 it they feel a little disillusioned, not aggressive, but a little brokenhearted, right? Some individuals hero worshipped you, and they learned that you know their heroes kind of can do some shady things. But for the majority of people, of the of the common people, of the workers, of the of the ex refugees, of the bread and butter of Green Castle, a good 60%, 65%, they've come to accept it. They don't hold any grudge against you. And for the most part, they still call you, you know, heroes of Green Castle, and they still appreciate you for what you've done. Uh, a very small minority, about 5% or so, can't get past the idea that you killed an unarmed person, no matter how you spin it. But they're a, a, a very small minority. When it comes to the Red Suns, who are now the Green Castle's security and police, that's about half and half. Half understand that things happen in battle, but the other half hold a bit of a grudge against you. But that only comes in the term of snide comments, remarks, murmurings, no actual aggressive action towards you. No accusations, no problems at the checkpoints, anything like that. That is probably mitigated considerably by, um, by the money that you paid towards T.O.'s next of kin. One final note as a little epilogue to this whole little endeavor... Three days later, Razor goes AWOL, and no one sees her. It's been proclaimed, uh, you do hear, that she abandoned her post and she shirked her duty. So if she were to have to come back to Greencastle again, the security are ordered to shoot on sight. But that's that. Yay, we beat the black wall! Uh, blackmail. Fuck this talking shit! <laughs> <laughs> if only we could work out a series of blinks, Kriana. We'd be all set. And we can just it looks send like... each other pictures of Chuck Norris, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks yeah. like in time, you're gonna get to finish what you started with your hammer. Because mm. I'm in sure she'll be space. back! Yeah, in <laughs> You see Razor just floating out there waiting for us. 
<laughs> just floating there in space. Like, I wow, mean. that is just <laughs> impressive. She's just floating there, like, just you and me, just a hand gesture. Oh man, <laughs> oh, a like hand battle, or a battle in space? That'd be kind of rad. He was like, pull over. I need to finish this. <laughs> Okay, so Jesus. All right, so good job, guys. Hi. Um, and now we quickly run up to Razor and use the magnetic device on her. No, <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Uh, so what would you guys like to do next? Do you want to follow up on the Natalie Ling thing? Do you want to do uh, a random event? Do you want to do a lesson with Lee? Uh, we're still in this six month period, of course. Uh, I say let's continue on the Natalie Lee thing. And then that way, um, we can, you know, whatever we don't finish next session, we can also just do some random events and stuff. Okay. We should probably clean up all the ice. Do we do that? <laughs> we were going to just role play. Yeah. The agree. <laughs> hey, listen, the agreement that these people, you could use these people's farmland is that you would clean up the ice afterwards. Luckily, Burns great at that. Sorry. Tom is great at that. Uh, he'll he'll require a little bit of rest, but uh, because of the elaborateness of it, Gyro actually convinces people like you don't have to be you don't have to tear it down right away. It can stick around for a week or so. Awesome, because it's pretty. You mm. did a work of art, Patrick. Mm -hmm. All right, so as far as the Natalie Ling thing goes, your last lead was that she was headed north towards a town far up north called Old Bones. Now, you were also told by her old friend Dustin McPherson that the small good news is that because of the wintry weather, even though she's on a hover cycle, there's only really one um, road that heads to the north that has that gets any sort of traffic that would... Um, be as clear. So if she were to go north, she probably followed along uh, this single road that extended like a good 200 or so miles before even splits off or diverse, uh, di diverges. So you have that kind of going for you. So I guess the question is, is that do you set off behind her? Yeah, I guess that's really the only path we can take. There are more there are more than just one path, right? That's just one lead. You can continue chasing things down, but if you want to actually find her, then um you know where she's headed. Right. Where she might actually be. So, we can start working on that if you're you if you're all down with that. I'm pretty down. How okay. about you, Brianna? Are you down to clown? I was muted. Yes, I am down to clown. Okay, so I'm assuming you, you're going to take the behemoth, and you're going to start heading up north, correct? Yes. Okay. Give me a moment. <laughs> so, you travel a good solid approximately nine hours or so. Uh, through the oh wait, picture, picture of the winter wonderland. There's no road, but oh god, that's that's a monster! Oh my god! <laughs> Surprise! Uh, Surprise attack! Never mind. I was I Razor. was gonna show that one picture, but Jeez. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. Don't give me ideas, mother effer. Yeah, mother effer. <laughs> yeah, effer of emmers. Yeah. You and your peeing. Your urination. Not, Perverse. Not sure where point A went to point B in that conversation, but okay. Just give it some time. Okay. Anyway. Accept it. You travel about nine hours, and then something very strange happens. Your radios go completely blank, and your radar shuts off. The... Behemoth is still in complete um, control, all right? And it's not like it's static. It's where, you know, you get bad reception. It's like it's a pit. Like, it's there, 
like, but it's gone. Like, you turn on the radio and it's just silence, right? Mm. You try to switch on the, the radar and it just doesn't turn on. And looking out the windows, you can't see any physical reason why this is. For those of you who have, well, if you think you have a skill that might help determine it, great. Um, off the top of my head, I'm thinking read sensory equipment might help in this circumstance. Okay. Uh, so give me one second. I succeed by 62. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyone else want to do a skill check? It has nothing. I love rolling. I failed by four. Mm, okay. <laughs> I don't get it right away. <laughs> it's fine. So... Al, mm -hmm. you hearken back to your old body, to your old coalition training, where they warned that sometimes due to the ever-changing and nefarious uh, use of magic and these accursed ley lines, sometimes the environment changes. And you've heard of certain dead spots where, for some reason... Radio signals and radio waves do not pass through or permeate it. Ooh. Okay. You're not too sure how big this dead zone is. Now, you can backtrack or you can continue ahead. Mm, no, I, I would suggest to the group that we continue ahead because if Natalie Ling went through this as well, we might, you know, we're, we're going to find her if we push forward, not if we back up. Okay. We got a consensus on that? I believe going forward would be nice. Okay. You go forward for about 45 minutes. Everyone roll me a D100, please. Mila. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm not too sure if you'd be piling at the behemoth at this point or whether you're just looking out the window. It's up to you. But you are the first one to spot with your keen enhanced vision poking out of a snow drift what looks to be a hover cycle covered in frost and ice. Uh-oh. Off to the side of the road. It looks like it swerved about 30 feet off the main road. Uh, Mila will point and be like, look at that. That's kind of weird. Who would park there? Is it a, a hover cycle? Yep. Oh, no. Al's going to... Well, if he was piloting, he'll stop. Otherwise, he'll ask Mila to pull over. Okay. You set the behemoth down in the snowy weather. Thankfully, the sun is shining. Uh, there isn't a cloud in the sky. It's so bright, in fact, that the snow is reflecting. You have to squint and get adjusted to uh, the, the glare of the snow. Um, a few, oh, actually no, no snowflakes, Inferno. It's a clear sky. It can't possibly <laughs> snow. From the trees. <laughs> <laughs> From the trees. Ice crystals form in the, in the atmosphere as you go out to investigate. Um, what do you guys do? We go out to investigate. Um, huh? Yeah, I, I, I would put on, obviously, the Titan and, and, yep. and uh, go out and check the wreckage okay what are you checking for first and foremost signs of life injuries people that need help then after that uh just kind of what happened here okay well you don't see any blood and you don't see any remains whatsoever nearby by the snow uh, the the hover cycle is half buried in the snow in, in the snow drift itself uh do you guys choose to pull the uh Pull the hover cycle off, or do you push the snow away, or do you just do you not touch the 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 hover cycle? Uh, you I would probably I would probably move it aside. Okay. Being generally curious about uh. All right. Cycle. So if you want to investigate this motorcycle, guys, look through your skills and tell me. What you think you would use to to aid you in that? Is it to dig up or just to identify? No, no, to identify, to analyze, figure out what happened to the cycle. You do know when you pick it out from snow, it is covered in, in frost. 
Um, so it's obviously been out here for some time, although you're not able to determine exactly how long without a skill check. Would, um, would mm-hmm. piloting hovercraft like hover cycles, uh, give me any insight into how it works or how anything like that? Yes. Or? Of course it would. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm very this. flexible when it comes to applying skills, right? So, uh, I, I want to create, like, this is the thing I would really like to harbor and it's, it's not something that has to be done right but sometimes when you come across a situation i don't want to just be give me a blank skill check you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Uh, skills and riffs work best when the players actively engage in it they say you know i have this skill would this help me in this circumstance so that's why i'm just trying to foster more um creative interpretation of your skills um also Al's going to use his uh, knowledge of piloting hovercraft, especially hover cycles, since he drives okay. one himself, yes. to uh, move it out of the way and check it for damage or malfunctions or things like that. Okay. All right. And I succeed by 84. Oh, my Old God. Yeah. Jesus, did you ever? Okay. Uh, before I touch down the information that you would glean, Patrick, Mila, is there anything in particular you would like to do? Uh, I... I really can't figure out a a skill I would use. All right. Then I got some horrible news for you. As you as you go out into the snow, a few minutes later, something cold hits you in the back of the head. <laughs> and you turn around and you see Alicia grinning at you. As she goes uh, down to make another snowball. <laughs> Mila will grin and start making the world's biggest snowball. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess while the ladies will go play, I think Patrick would be like electronics and then immediately go into mechanical engineering. <laughs> okay. Now, out of curiosity, do you want to utilize any of your NPCs? Um, Bear, August. <laughs> August. Hey, August, you want to look at this thing? inside looking out, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I just had an image of him, like, pressed up against the window. <laughs> okay, but uh, Bear, maybe the useful NPCs, like, <laughs> um, do you want to utilize any of them? Uh, yeah, can we ask Bear? I, uh, I would ask Bear, like, I, I know that it's going to be hard with all the snow, but can you see if there's tracks or any sign of someone moving away from here bear nods slowly and he says if there are if there are signs i will try and find them could i use my wilderness survival to help with that damn straight is that before after this (laughs) of the i think she would like be like hear al say that and be like oh help and then like get hit in the head with a snowball (laughs) that works after the second snowball uh alicia subsides realizing that people are trying to get things done she just makes a comment that your head is such a big target Mila later. will grin, and she fails by one. Later, you okay. need to use the Wilderness Survivor skill to make the biggest snowball ever. Okay, you know what, um, Mila? You only failed by one, so you assist Bear. And uh, I don't want to delve too much in your background at all, right? But this, um, while, while, while you're doing this, while you're tracking, uh, while you're trying to uncover any sort of tracks, you see Bear kind of wistfully look towards you. And you hear a mummer like old times uh, before uh, you continue on. So let me resolve all your checks then, okay? First things first, we'll start in order. Squee. Uh, the hover cycle. It is clear that um, originally uh, it... <sighs> There's the exterior damage is very, very light. Um, the front of the hover cycle is cracked slightly, probably for hit from hitting the icy snow drift. All right. Uh, in order for something like this to happen, you know, as a pilot, that something mechanically must have failed. Although you can't see any external signs, it must be something internal. Patrick opening up and looking at the innards of such a thing. Wait, did you roll skill check? No. No, roll me a skill check. 
All right. Uh, let's see. That would be this. I succeed by right. twenty. <laughs> you open oh. up. You open up the the in, inside, and you, you notice that the um. Uh, what's it called? The radiator. Yes, the radiator uh, froze on this hover cycle. Uh, froze. Uh, typically, it is insulated against cold, but the insulation was worn and uh, of bad quality, so um, it didn't protect nearly as much. So uh, that's the cause of the, mechan- as of the mechanical failure. Bear and Mila, or Nora, whomever. It takes some time. It takes you about 10 minutes or so. But, Mila, you're able to uncover a few old prints that were, like, you know how sometimes you have, like, deep impressions in the snow, right? And then the snow blows over and kind of covers them, but you still see, like, a very, very light outline? Mm -hmm. That's what you notice. And you notice some of them going into the forest towards these hills in about this direction. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, out of curiosity, yeah. is there any pattern on the hover cycle? Pattern? Yeah. yeah. Off the side, brushing off some of the frost and snow, the side of it is yellow. Yellow streak along the side. Well, Patrick is going to give a small um, uh, uh, serious concerned frown um, and going to be uh, looking through uh, anything else he can glean, but while he's doing that, he's going to mention offhandly to Al, um, this bike mm, is most likely hers. Al will nod and say, if she's been out here for a while in this weather, she might not be doing well. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess the next step would be to uh, have, well, I guess I would ask Bear, how, if we were to follow those tracks, would you need to be on the ground following them? I mean, how quickly can we move and still follow them? In order for accuracy, I would need to follow them myself. You could follow behind in the behemoth, or you could follow along with me on foot. If it goes into the forest as it does, it would actually be faster if we were on our own feet. I will nod and say, well, if she's out there and she's injured, you've seen no blood or anything, right? No, I do not smell it either. All right. Um, Does Al know what a body armor, like if she had a wound, internal wound, or like she got cut up something, would the body armor hold in? Or would yeah. she bleed? It's completely environmentally okay, yeah. sealed. Um, so unless there was a break in the armor. Got it. So I was like, all right, so that's that's not really an indication one way or the other. Yes, can you track them and we'll follow. Okay. Are you going to follow in the behemoth or follow on foot? I would follow with him. Um, I don't know about the others. Um, Patrick would probably follow by foot. Uh, um, someone should stay with Behemoth. Uh, you know what? Uh, Nora will take over. Nora will keep the drive the Behemoth at a safe distance away. Okay, great. All right, wonderful. Let me roll another skill check. We should have August follow us on foot. <laughs> Oof. Okay. So. You fo- you continue on for three hours, and you can see that the sun is starting to set. At times, Bear pauses 
and thinks for a long time, and in seven separate occasions you need to backtrack some. He, he mentions he's doing the best he can, but it has been, by the look of it, several days. Oh, sorry, not several days, but a few days, and the snow blows in these valleys. Uh, mm-hmm. After the th- third or fourth time, mm-hmm. uh, I think Patrick might chip in. Okay, roll it. He's going to be using his wilderness survival. All right, uh, I'm going to give you a penalty of 30% because of the snowy conditions. Absolutely. Um, okay. I succeed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you do. Just on the on the button, didn't you, yeah. Mister yeah. Mister Button Face? All right. So uh, after the fourth time, you help with course correction, and you and Bear together, uh, and of course, oh uh, no, Mila's and Nora is uh, piling the behemoth. Uh, you. Uh, so let's retroactively say instead of backing up seven times only backs up four and on the fifth time you start going towards and you're definitely going towards these hills as the sun starts to set on the horizon it's not nearly dark at all Tom who is in the behemoth comes next to you Nora and he says wait wait I sense fire Oh, um, no, to get radio, uh, to let the others know. Radio that... isn't operational. Oh, fuck, that's right. Okay. Is there a horn? Uh, yeah. <laughs> or you have the speaker yeah, system. Yeah, you do. Um, okay. Uh, let's just use the speaker because if it was Mila, it would be horn. But since it's Nora, she's going to get on the speaker and says, Tom says he senses fire. Okay. Uh, Tom, Tom would uh, later get out and let you know. And if it's okay by you guys, he would lead you where he senses fire. Sure. Okay. Is, no, I don't trust magic. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not magic. It's psionics. He says. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. <laughs> Elf. <laughs> <laughs> and using Tom's sense fire ability, you come towards. It looks like an old crag. It's not really much of a cave. It really looks like just more of a, a deep rivet in the side of a of a cliff that uh, is only about, I'd say, about seven feet wide and not very deep whatsoever. And you can see the glimmers of a, of a fire being made. And you do see a, a lone figure stooped over the fire. And she notices your shadows, and she could hear you coming. And you hear a female voice go say, Don't step any closer. I got a gun. Say what you want. We're looking for Natalie Ling. <sighs> yeah, you found her. Thank heavens above. All right, come in. We would. I would. I would. Okay. I would go forward. All right. So uh, you enter the cave. Uh, the en- enter the cave. But like I said, it's not very big. It's about maybe twelve deep. And you see, by a makeshift fire, along with her bags and traveling whatnot, uh, you see uh, a woman who's kind of leaned up against, uh, leaned up against the the craggy wall. All right. Uh, she's still in her body armor, but her helmet is off, and uh, uh, energy rifle sits now in her lap. And she says, Whew. "I thought uh, I didn't think people would find me this far. I uh, had to get out of the snow and the and the cold. Uh, I had a little bit of food left, but I was hoping someone would come and investigate." It was, I wouldn't be able to walk that distance. You saved my ass. But how'd you know I was gone? I don't know you, do I? No. No, but we uh, know an acquaintance of yours. Oh? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, she says. And she uh, stands up, and you notice that she, she's limping a little bit. Uh, just very slightly, though. Um, roll me a paramedics check. 
Alrighty. I succeed by 31. Okay. So you notice as she walks towards you excitedly, she's favoring her right leg. It's as if she has a twisted ankle. It's not like it's broken or anything like that, but it's just tender. You know how mm-hmm. when people walk and it's a little tender. That that that's what you're. That's your quick visual diagnosis. But she she moves towards you towards the mouth of the cave, and she's you see her just smile and she goes, "Oh, she came back." Um, let's not discuss this here. Let's get you in some somewhere warm first, and we'll talk all about it. What 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 are you talking about? Uh, fine, I guess. Is everything okay? Mm, not really, no. Oh, dear. And her her smile fades. And she says, no, 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 no. You need to tell me now. I've been worried sick. I thought she left me. Oh, I mean, we've always had a rocky, um, you know, past. Elizabeth was... Injured. And, How uh, bad? Very bad. I was a doctor that was treating her. Before she... I'm sorry, but she didn't make it. <sighs> okay. And uh, the her face changes to uh, shock and silence and her mouth closes. She doesn't say anything just yet. She made a request of me, a final request, two of them actually. One was to cremate her body and spread them off a high mountain, which we did. The other one was she wanted only that we find you and give you a message. That she was sorry and that she had been stupid and that she never meant to hurt you. And with that, she cries. And uh, through her her blubbering tears, she says, yeah, maybe it's best we go somewhere warmer. Al will uh, help her get to the behemoth if she accepts his help. Uh, What do you mean by help? As in like... Get her by the hand? Well, like like put an uh, arm around my shoulders. No, she she pushes off the arm. She's, she's, She's not interested in that. Uh, oh, but then, you get her set. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say then I'd probably get her bags and things. So okay, fair enough. Uh, Mila, Patrick, is there anything in particular you'd like to do? Uh, no, I'm in the behemoth, so I'm sort That's, of just okay, chilling. All right, Patrick. Um, Patrick is um sobbing a little bit mm-hmm. at this point. Okay, and um, following along. Okay. So, uh, when she gets in the behemoth, uh, and she gets a little bit warmed up, her stuff's off to the side, she manages to collect herself in a moment. She goes, how did she get hurt? I am not exactly sure of the details. I was only the one that treated her, but... Please, tell me everything you know. I know that... He pauses. For- <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I knew this was coming up. And uh, yeah. um, hang on one second, just so I'm clear. Yeah. What was yeah. her actual injury? I remember it was something that was almost. She life-threatening. got her leg blown off right. by Patrick. Right. Okay. Her calf, actually. Um. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'll do it this way. When <laughs> I, when I found her, she had, her leg had been severely damaged by some sort of energy rifle. I didn't see who shot her. I treated her as best I could. I can tell you that she wasn't in pain at the end. Okay. Um, all right. Um, she says, oh, uh, all right, well, where did you find her? Outside of Greencastle. Where outside of Greencastle? Just, here, can you take me back? I, I, I gotta I gotta get my a few things together and uh, I want you to take me where you found her how how long ago was this I'm sorry we're not headed that direction listen my hover cycle is trashed you came you came to find me and you're not gonna take me back to Greencastle 
I you, you cared enough to give me your last message, but you won't take me back there? There are other people who need Do you want money? and treatment. This is not about money. You were headed somewhere. We can drop you off there. We can even help no, you get I'm your No, I'm not medicine. headed there anymore, she says. That's not important. I have to find who did this to Elizabeth. Listen, I don't know who you are, but if someone you cared about, someone you loved, sure, I mean, it was fucking dysfunctional, but I loved her, and she clearly loved me too. You would do something, wouldn't you? Oh, God. All right, out of character. Um... You can end the set. We can end the session here if you want. You guys can discuss sure. what you want. Well, keep discussing first. Maybe we don't want to end the session right this uh, very second. Al's, but talk out of character, guys. Al, yeah. I know Al likes lying to people, and a lot of times he feels that lies are gentler. But he really hates lying about this. We can't. I. What I think. I mean. I know. We. The best we can do is just disassociate ourselves pretend we're two different people you know like these people did it but it's not acknowledged that it's us i guess i don't know how to word it well here's the thing i mean no one knows that elizabeth is almost no one knows that she's even dead so i mean where can we oh she starts to? asking questions it's gonna be bad news not really though because no one knows that we did it Mm. They would just know that somehow she went out and died. Yeah, um, a few people. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's not. It's not. There's no evidence that leads it directly to you. But I, I would say, I would venture to say, there's circumstantial evidence. Think about it. She was last seen. Um, she was last seen leaving Beh leaving Greencastle, and then a few hours later, uh, the Greencastle investigators come, and you say, oh, we had an inter-party dispute, and there's evidence of a battle, right? Yeah. Now, does that mean it was Elizabeth? No, but it's circumstantial evidence. Okay. I was going to say, yeah, it would, like, I think it would, I don't know how good her like detective CSI skills are um but like I don't think like well these people found me these people were in communication with her blah 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 blah, blah. probably the people that that killed her what if we do it like this we 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 tell her we went to her with James T she was coming to us to talk to us about James T we think but at some point she never showed up. When we went looking for her, she was injured. Her bodyguards were gone, and their ATV was damaged. We brought well, her and the thing, ATV back to the behemoth and tried to treat her. The thing is, now we're suddenly bringing up this whole James T thing. It's like, well, why didn't you tell me that right away? You just said you didn't know her. Blah, 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 blah. Our stories. We, stories strange and sweet. Well, it looks no, no, bad. no, no. Wait, 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 wait. We didn't say we don't know her. We just yeah, said that we, we treated her. Yeah, but like, okay, so we neglected to say that we knew her beyond that we found her injured? It, it, well, at that point in time in the ice cold cave, was Al going to go into the entire detailed story? That's no, he true. was just going to tell her the okay. important oh, bits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or I'm just trying to play devil's advocate I'm here. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm trying don't to shoot a horse in a mouth. I, I oh. am simply <laughs> trying to <laughs> counter it. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> so where do don't you shoot, shoot a horse? blind horse in the mouth? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger or don't look a horse in the mouth. <laughs> Can't make glue without breaking a few eggs. I, I think in that way we could take her right back to where the battle, uh, well, not where the battle was, but maybe somewhere in the forest nearby. And um, just basically say, look, we have the ATV because all we found was her severely injured, her bodyguards gone because they were gone, um, <laughs> and Blood a damaged <laughs> ATV because the ATV was damaged. Mm -hmm. So, is everyone okay with that? Yeah, you do your do your magic sweet talking. Well, I want to make sure everyone's okay though. Everyone's on board though, Patrick. 
I... Yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure. All right. Are we going to switch it back in character? Sure. All right. Uh, Al would probably say, okay, okay, you made your point. We'll take you back. Thank you, she says. On the way there, can I, can I ask you some more questions? I'll tell you everything I know. Okay. So, I mean, we'll, we'll role play this as, you know, you're all traveling, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, Squee, don't feel like you have to be the voice to answer all these questions. If Patrick wants to pipe up or Nora wants to pipe up, then please do so. So, she asks, all right, well, uh, let me get a timeline here. How long ago was this? Hang on, I have to think a bit because we're in that kind of flexible time period. So it's been a few months, right? It's been yes, it's been like three months. Um, it's been several months, about three months at least. <sighs> she says, "Shit." What? No, never mind. I should be grateful that I knew. All right, and you'll 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 take me to where you found her. Yes. Okay. So, um. You're, you're a doctor? I am. Okay. So, take me through it, step by step. What happened? How you came across her? Well, how much do you know about the incident with Jasper? Just as much as anyone else knows. Uh, he, he was a, a fuckhead tyrant, but he paid his mercenaries... Uh, I, I got some work through him, mostly, thankfully, nonviolent shit. Elizabeth worked for him. She was preoccupied. Uh, she was, um, uh, you know, getting fat off of uh, everyone that came into Greencastle. She was, she pretty much mo monopolized the cybernetic industry. Are you saying that she was involved with Jasper somehow? I am not positive i was more giving you a beginning to where we got involved we came to Green castle to learn more about the situation between jasper and the citizens while we were there we visited elizabeth in her cybernetics shop we had a traveling companion with us at the time that was okay. highly converted she was very interested in him and offered to buy him off of our hands. We were hesitant. She's not exactly the um, most confidence-insuring salesman. And we went back to our behemoth, which you're in writing in now, outside the city. We got word from her that she was going to come and discuss... Uh, Perhaps purchasing the gentleman again, but she never made it to our behemoth. After an extended period of time, we went out looking. No, one not extended. How long? She was supposed to meet us, and when she was about an hour. At uh, what time late, was she supposed to meet you? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't remember exactly what time of day it was. Please think. This is important. GM, was it sometime in the afternoon? No, it was in the evening. Okay. It was in the evening. Okay. She was late by about an hour, hour and a half. We got worried. We went looking for her. What we found a few miles away was her badly wounded, her ATV wounded, and her bodyguards that she said she had brought with her were gone. Uh, absolutely atomized. Okay. So, um, something attacked them. Someone attacked them. Or they attacked someone, but yes, something happened. But, okay. 
if she agreed to meet you, who else was she supposed to meet? Do you know? No, I don't. But she was very uncooperative with what happened. What do you mean? She didn't tell us who attacked her or why. Why not? I don't know. My concern was her leg, not her backstory. She looks at you uh, for a second, and it's a look of anger. It's just a brief flash, and her lips peel back, and she says, You don't know her that very well, but I do. Don't speak ill of the dead, at least not around me. The wound's really fresh still. You mistake me, or I overspeak. I you overspeak. My, I only meant to say that my goal was to save her life. I didn't take a lot of time to ask her questions as to how it happened. <sighs> and by the time I realized that that was not going to happen, it just didn't seem as important as what her last wishes were. She looks down at her hands. You said when she died she wasn't in pain. How do you know? I had her on very powerful drugs. There must be something. I'll find it. He nods. He says, there's one more thing. She was bleeding internally. I couldn't stop it. It was going to be a slow painful death or a peaceful one she chose the latter yeah she was very uncompromising she was a cold woman very cold but there was something deep down in there that wasn't machine that wasn't a part of it or her experimentation and now that's dead too Fuck. And with that, I don't think she has any other follow-up questions. And uh, uh, you're able to return to Greencastle just fine. Uh, in the morning light. Uh, uh, so where do you take her? Whew. Uh, pretty much any clearing with a lot of snow would do. <sighs> okay. All right. Fair enough. And she sighs, and she says, well, I'm not going to be able to dig anything out, but I'll start asking around. We'll see. I guess I owe you for rescuing me. I'm sorry. My grief is... I'm just... I'm just distracted. You, you understand. I understand. I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you all for saving me. Not everyone would do something like that. Heck, half the people would probably brain me and try to take my stuff. I'm glad you weren't some goddamn monster outside the cave. <sighs> Most of my money is going to be spent replacing my bike and following up on who killed Elizabeth. But you're welcome to some of it if you'd like. No, that's completely unnecessary. You just hmm. take care of yourself. Yeah. Before we go... Please, take a moment, think about it. And she looks to each of you. If you can remember any other detail, no matter how small, no matter how insignificant, please let me know. I won't laugh. I won't think it's stupid. Patrick will actually look down and consider pretty hard about anything else that he can remember that's not medical. Mm-hmm. I, as a player, can't even think of any. <laughs> okay, that's fine. If you can't, you can. That's fine. I just had to say it in character. If you can't think of anything, just say so, and we're good. Okay. Yeah, yeah nothing. Okay. And Al? Nope, nothing. Okay. She nods. Thanks again. Good luck with wherever you're going. Uh, 
Mm. She looks around, hopeful. Well, uh, actually, um, before I do this, uh-huh. hey, party, would it be okay if I gave her the vehicle? <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. I'm all for it. What? What? The ATV. Uh, you remember? ATV. Yeah, the, we're probably going to need to take off the freaking, like, Missile Damn launcher it. off the top. Oh, of let's keep that yeah. one. Yeah, but let's. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, sure. I, I'm with you because it was technically Elizabeth's, or you know, so yeah. Uh, we uh, it's it's uh doesn't have its original um, markings or anything like that. Uh, interesting story. Uh, her vehicle was used. To save one of our friends from a Spookworth uh, uh, slaver. Hmm. Uh, I, if that means anything. Normally I would say no to such a gift because I don't believe in taking gifts because those just lead to favors. But it was hers. And you found this at the site? It was the... So you found it and took it. I don't. I don't blame you for that. I mean, it's it's a world we gotta scavenge. Yeah, I. Since you're here, I didn't think it should be with us. I. What do you mean? You, what do you think it should? Be? What do you mean? Well, you knew her really well, and I mean, it was hers. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll take it. Um, I'll definitely take it. Uh, it's. Uh, been uh, re- uh, patched up and redone. Okay. Here, wait. So wait, 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 she says. Take me to it. Okay. okay. Uh, Patrick will take her to it. All right. You said it was patched up, right? So what damage, what, what damage was sustained by it? What kind of, what kind of fire? And where, where was it damaged? Uh, you don't have to, yeah, you can just look over it and Mm -hmm. go like, uh, I really only remember what the Spilgorth did to it as, and you can, uh, Patrick will point to like a large, just like different metal sheet going through it. You hear her give a bit of a, an exasperated sigh. Okay. All right. That's fine. Al, Al will try and say, um, uh, condolence or, or like, you have to understand the Spilgorth don't tend to leave things very organized yeah sure well I doubt Splagorth got this close to Greencastle without people knowing so I think we'll rule them out alright thanks for your help guys thanks for everything I'll remember it I'll remember you I uh, I wish I had something other than just a woman's grief but it's a, uh, it's a weight off our shoulders to get the final wishes. Yeah, yeah. You know what? In everything, I'm glad. I'm I'm not glad that she's dead. I'm. I'll, I'll find out who did it. I'll do my best. But at least I'm glad I knew. There are so many people in this world that just die and they go missing, and you never know. At least, you know, in the back of my mind. I always would have wondered, and at least her memory can be put at rest. In a sense, at least I know, and there's some control in knowing. Well, take care of yourself. Yeah, thanks. And with that, she'll she'll depart. Al feels awful. Mm-hmm. Well, it's... It's part of the experience, right? Patrick oh. did what he could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, that's. It's a bit of a downer. Uh, it's a bittersweet way to end the session, I think. So I think that's a good. I think this is a good time to to wrap it up. Um, yeah. I, I just want to say, as a personal note, that this was really fun. I I was so impressed with your little festival performance idea. You have no idea. So kudos to you guys. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll go ahead and informing everyone never uh, was never been so entertaining.